Web Application Development with Microsoft.NET Framework 4. Now, this series is designed to help you understand how to build web applications for Windows using version 4 of the .NET Framework and Visual Studio 2010. You'll be using ASP.NET along with the related .NET Framework technologies. You'll learn to develop web forms pages, develop and use web forms controls, implement client-side scripting in AJAX, uh, configure and extend a web application, display and manipulate data, and even use ASP.NET's Model View Controller or MVC version 2. Now let's quickly cover what we're going to cover. We'll start with this first module, which is just a quick introduction, and we are going to talk about some important prerequisites. Module number two is where we'll jump right in. In fact, two, three, four, and five are all part of web forms. We'll start in module two, or nugget number two, by talking about master pages, themes, and pages. Uh, we'll go over things like configuration and page directives, like view state and request validation. We'll talk about the purpose of the web.config file, uh, how to set the HTML doc type, how to create and apply themes uh, using content placeholders, and using things like nested master pages. Uh, we'll also talk about switching themes at runtime. Now, nugget number three is going to be all about the page lifecycle. So we'll talk about things like the uh, is post back and is valid techniques, uh, show you how to dynamically create controls, and we'll kind of talk about control availability within the page lifecycle so that you know when you can access a control and when you can't, uh, accessing control values during post back and overriding page events. Nugget number four, still talking web forms, will be about page caching and state management. Uh, we'll actually look at data caching and page output caching, as well as control output caching. Talk about some of the cache dependencies and how to set cache lifetimes. And talk about things like session and application state, server and view state, which are client side, uh, configuring session state, session state compression, view state compression, and so forth. Finally, nugget number five will be our last one on web forms, and it'll be about globalization, uh, creating a web application that can be localized into different languages. So we'll talk about using resource files and browser files, look at the current culture and current UI culture, and the ASP localize. The next four nuggets are going to focus on web controls. So we'll start with nugget number six, which is validating user input. And we'll talk about different ways to do that, including client side, server side, and via AJAX. We'll look at custom validation controls and talk about how to do regex validation. We'll look at uh, validation groups, jQuery validation. A um, couple things we're not going to worry about are range validators and required validator because those don't really show up on the exam. In nugget number seven, we'll look at page layout controls. Uh, web parts, navigation controls, file upload controls, and so on. Nugget number eight will be user controls and server controls. That's going to be a big one. For user controls, we'll talk about how to register a control, add it, uh, reference it, dynamically load it, uh, create custom events, custom properties, and how to control the visibility of that control in the toolbox in Visual Studio. Uh, for server controls, we'll look at things like composite controls, uh, adding them to the toolbox, working with the global assembly cache, creating custom control events, and registering these from the web.config file. Nugget number nine, which will be our last on web controls, will be using code behind. So we'll look at uh, HTML encoding to avoid cross-site scripting, very important security concept, uh, navigating through and manipulating the control hierarchy, uh, the find control method, control rendering compatibility version, and URL encoding. Moving on to nuggets number 10, 11, and 12, that'll be all about the stuff we can do client side, uh, starting with number 10, which will be dynamic features using JavaScript and JavaScript event. Uh, we'll talk about for dynamic features, uh, referencing client ID, using script manager, script combining, uh, and so forth. Uh, for altering a page dynamically, we'll look at several different techniques, including jQuery, adding, modifying, and removing page elements, adding effects. Uh, we will spend some time talking about jQuery selectors as well. And for JavaScript events, we'll look at uh, DOM, or document object model events, custom events, and handling events in jQuery. Nugget 11 will be uh, the first of two different kinds of AJAX that we'll look at, and this is ASP.NET AJAX. We'll be talking about client-side templating, creating a script service, extenders, uh, how to interact with the server, the Microsoft AJAX client library, custom extenders, multiple update panels, 
triggers, timer, uh, and uh, quite a bit more. Nugget number 12 will be the other kind of AJAX, jQuery AJAX. So we'll look at uh, get, post, get, JSON, AJAX, XML and HTML, and JSON itself. We'll also look at some techniques for handling return types, and that'll bring us to the end of the client side portion of our show. Then we'll handle a couple of sort of miscellaneous nuggets. Um, number 13 will be authentication and authorization. So we'll talk about concepts like membership, login controls, roles, uh, location elements, protecting areas of a site or a page, personalization, and so on. Uh, for number, uh, nugget number 14, it'll be extending a web application. And we've got three specific areas we'll talk about. The first will be HTTP handlers and HTTP modules. Uh, where we'll look at generic handlers, asynchronous handlers, and so on. Uh, the second part will be initialization and error handling. So we'll look at uh, application start and session start and application begin request, three areas where you can initialize. Uh, for error handling, we'll talk about unhandled exceptions, custom error sections in web.config, redirecting to an error page, and how to use try catch, also how to create custom exceptions. And the last section in nugget number 14 will be debugging. So we'll talk about remote debugging, local debugging, JavaScript debugging, lots of different types of debugging, uh, attaching to a process, logging and tracing, using local IIS, and a couple of other cool things. Nuggets 15, 16, and 17 will be all about data. Uh, we'll start with number 15, of course, which will be data-bound controls and data source controls. We'll talk about a bunch of different data-bound controls, data list, repeater, list view, uh, tree view, chart, grid view, a whole bunch of them. And for data source controls, we'll look at a few. Object data source, link data source, XML data source, SQL data source, and a couple of others. Nugget number 16 will be using link, language integrated query. So we'll talk about transferring data by using link to create XML or JSON to transmit to the client. Uh, we will also look at link to SQL, link to entities, and link to objects. A couple other things too, including managing the data context lifetime. Nugget 17, our last on data, will be dynamic data projects. And we'll talk about dynamic data controls, custom field templates, and how to connect to data context and object context. The home stretch, nuggets number 18 through 20, will be about ASP.NET Model View Controller, or MVC2. Uh, nugget 18 will be an overview. We'll talk about how MVC works, things like single project areas, organizing controllers into areas, shared views, content files and folders, and custom routes. Nugget number 19 will focus on controllers and actions. Uh, so we'll look at Visual Studio's support for right-click context menus, uh, action filters, model binders, and action results subclasses. Finally, in nugget number 20, we'll be on to MVC views, uh, built-in and custom HTML helpers, strongly typed views, static page checking, templated input helpers, view master page, and view user control. And that is going to be a lot to cover. In fact, for us to get through all of that, you're going to have to bring something to the table. Before you start this series, you really should already have a good understanding of either Visual Basic or C Sharp. Now, the exam does not test language-specific skills. You'll be able to take the exam in whichever of those two programming languages that you prefer. The programming language uh, itself is, is not really part of the exam, in other words. The exam focuses on the technologies in the .NET framework rather than on a specific language. You should have a strong understanding of object-oriented programming, or OOP, in the .NET framework, including concepts like uh, classes, inheritance, namespaces, object instantiation, properties, methods, and so forth. Now, any Microsoft exam can be challenging. For this one, I found that really thoroughly, thoroughly reviewing the materials that I'm going to present in this series of nuggets was a great start. From there, I reviewed the Microsoft documentation on some of the key elements to make sure I was really familiar with everything they could do and how they worked. And then, and here's the key, I spent a lot of time actually practicing, writing code, debugging it, and making it work. The exams include a lot of code snippets, either in Visual Basic or C Sharp, your choice, and you really need to have a working knowledge of what the code does and what code you'd write to accomplish particular tasks. I'm going to introduce you to all of these concepts and show you how they work, but it's really up to you to practice them to make sure that you really, really embrace them and understand them and that you can sit down and really use them as part of a production project.
So if you're ready to dive in, I'm ready to go too. <music>